Enoch gives a second argument for the objectivity of morality. And we're going to consider that by looking at these sorts of claims, or really sorts of disagreements about various kinds of claims. So let's just talk immediately about those disagreements. So uh, I want you to think about whether you agree or disagree with the following claim. Now, if you don't know what a frosty is, I think you're lost in general in the world. But if you do know what a frosty is, you know that it's, you know, an ice cream sort of dessert thing from Wendy's. And they have vanilla and they have chocolate frosties. And it's just true that vanilla frosties are better than chocolate frosties, right? Now I say that with a smile on my face because it's kind of a joke, right? We could disagree about that. Um, but let's talk about that disagreement and let's juxtapose it to a different sort of disagreement. At least 10% of the people in this class will make an A. Now, again, do you disagree or agree with that? Think about whether you think that's true or not. Um, you have a vested interest in it if you're in my class. But um, that's either true or not, and we could disagree about whether it's true. Okay, now finally consider one further kind of disagreement we, we could have. Uh, consider this claim, we ought to outlaw all semi-automatic firearms. Now, again, we could disagree about whether this is true or not, whether we ought to outlaw all such firearms. And we're not really here to argue about that claim, although we just need to note that we could argue about it. We could introduce lots of kinds of evidence. We could uh, maybe go back and forth, convince one another. Maybe we don't convince one another. Maybe we get mad at each other, whatever. But we're just right now talking about how the disagreement feels from the inside, so to speak. And we're going to compare it those, to those first two disagreements. So according to Enoch, and I think this seems generally right, the frosty disagreement feels really different than the class grade disagreement. Because we were, I was kind of cracking jokes about the frosty disagreement because ultimately it's not a real serious disagreement. And not only that, it doesn't even really feel like a true disagreement, right? There's no real objective truth to the matter. We're kind of just disagreeing. We're just kind of stating our preferences, right? I had one of these running jokes with one of my friends where we would go to Wendy's and I would get a vanilla Frosty and he would get a chocolate Frosty and I would treat him like he was a totally irrational person for getting a chocolate Frosty and he would treat me like I was a totally irrational person for getting a vanilla Frosty because chocolate was better. But it was kind of like with a wink and a nod because we knew that we just kind of differed in our preferences. There was no real objective truth of the matter. But when we disagree about whether the 10% of these, the people in the class will get an A, or when we disagree about something like whether the earth is round or flat, or the makeup of an atom, or um, something like that, it doesn't feel like we're just stating our own preference and trying to get the other person to have the same preference we have. It actually feels like we're trying to discover the truth about something that does not change with our preferences, right? We're not just trying to state what's going on inside of us. That's what I'm trying to do when I say vanilla Frosties are better. I'm saying, really, I'm kind of talking about my preferences. But when I say that 10% of the people in this class will get an A or won't get an A, right? Um, I'm not just talking about what's going on in my head. Although that might be a little bit of a complicated case, right? Because I'm the one who determines the grade to some degree. Um, but when, certainly when we talk about the flatness or the roundness of the earth, I'm again, not talking about just what's going on in my head when I disagree with you, right? There's an, some standard out there. There's some truth of the matter out there about the roundness or flatness of the earth. And we're trying to get at that truth. And at the end of the day, we can't both be right. If I say the earth is flat and you say the earth is round, there's going to be a truth that makes one of us right and one of us wrong. But that's not really how the frosty disagreement works, right? There's no real right or wrong there. I like vanilla frosties and my friend likes chocolate frosties. As much as we joke about the other one person being in the wrong, uh, that's not really what's happening. That's why it's a joke. Okay, so there's a different feel to these different sorts of disagreements. And, um, and it's a deliberation test too, Enoch says, because it, it's also something that doesn't have to happen in a disagreement. We could, deliberating about whether something is true, whether frosty, vanilla frosties are better than chocolate, feels different 
than deliberating even on our own about whether the earth is round or flat. Again, in the first case, we're trying to figure out how we feel about something, what we prefer, right? And that can actually be hard, right? F figuring out what you want more between two options. But it's a very different enterprise entirely from trying to figure out what's true out there in the world, regardless of our preferences or desires. Okay, so those two sorts of things or two sorts of disagreements and two sorts of deliberation feel really different subjectively, you know, from our experience. And the question is, when we disagree about whether we have a moral obligation to ban firearms, what does it feel more like? Does it feel more like disagreeing about Frosties or does it feel more like disagreeing about some fact of the matter independent of us? Uh, so that's the question. Now, Enoch thinks the answer is that it feels much more like, I don't know why I have the abortion disagreement here, but it feels more like, let's take that case, when we disagree about abortion, whether abortion is wrong or whether we ought to ban firearms, um, it's going to feel more like the class, class grade disagreement. We don't just walk away from that disagreement and say, well, you know, live and let live especially on really serious moral issues. Maybe we could get away with having that live and let live attitude about what we take to be lighter moral disagreements, um, which can even border on not being moral disagreements at all, right? Like about whether you should say thank you when you leave a party or something like that. Again, that might even, you might say, well, you know, some people think you should, some people think you shouldn't, or whether you should take your shoes off when you go into somebody's house. There's disagreements across cultures about that. Uh, but at the end of the day, reflective people can walk away from those disagreements and say, yeah, I mean, it's just sort of a difference of culture, difference of attitude, difference of preference. At the same time, though, those are getting pretty far away from true moral disagreements. Those are just more like etiquette disagreements. It's not really a moral matter whether you take your shoes off when you come into somebody's house, um, at least primarily. Uh, maybe you have some moral duty to respect someone's wishes but you don't have a moral duty outside of that to take your shoes off when you come into somebody's house. It's only because you have a duty to respect their wishes. And everybody across both cultures, uh, with the shoe taking off and the non-shoe taking off cultures, agrees that, agree that you, or they at least can agree that you have a duty to respect someone's wishes when you come into their house. Okay, so let's look at those. We're, we're kind of saying there that you can get maybe a little bit away from what Enoch is saying here. You can disagree with Enoch if you focus on lighter moral disagreements. But then what we were saying sort of on Enoch's behalf as a retort to this is that it actually starts to look like the more you move in that direction, the more your disagreements look like not real moral disagreements. They're just sort of disagreements of etiquette. And when we look at the real moral disagreements about whether we uh, whether abortion is right or wrong, whether uh, a gun, a ban on semi-automatic firearms is right or wrong, it actually starts to feel less like that. We don't just walk away from an, a disagreement about abortion and say, well, you know, live and let live. Ultimately, it's just a matter of preference. No, we think, look, that person is wrong. They've got the wrong opinion, and I need to be able to show them that they have the objectively wrong opinion. So Enoch thinks in that way, it feels more like disagreeing about the class grades or disagreeing about the roundness or flatness of the earth, right? There's not, it's not the case that, you know, it's just totally depends on your preference. And so we can make jokes about it in the way that we made jokes about the spinach test and the frosties. Um, so I've already hinted at, let, let's, that's Enoch's argument, right? It's, evidence, it's not a knockdown argument, but it's evidence that he thinks that morality is objective, that our disagreements and our deliberations about moral matters feels more like um, disagreements and deliberation about objective matters of fact than it does about subjective matters of fact. We didn't think about the, we didn't talk about the deliberation part, but let's think about that now just as kind of to get that on the table. Uh, when we deliberate about some moral matter, if I were to ask you, well, what do you think about abortion? Right? Do you think abortion is right or wrong? Are you ultimately going to just be trying to tap into your desires and preferences like you do in the Frosty case? Like I ask you, well, what do you like, vanilla or Frosty, vanilla or chocolate Frosties more? You're gonna be deliberating by introspecting. 
thinking, okay, let me try to think about what I like and what, what is more desirable to me. And you might even kind of like try to imagine what it's like to taste the vanilla frosty, what it's like to taste the chocolate frosty. But you're inward focused, you're navel gazing, so to speak, right? You're thinking about your own preferences and what you like or dislike more. But that's not what you're doing, Enoch would say, when you think about whether abortion is right or wrong. You're actually trying to consider different kinds of evidence, like, well, is the fetus, uh, you know, sensate? Can it, what can it feel? What can it not feel? What can it think about? Does it have desires? Uh, what about the mom? What's going to happen to the mom if she does and doesn't abort the baby, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're not really deliberating based on your own thinking about primarily your own preferences or desires or beliefs or whatever. You're thinking about what's actually true out there in the world. And it feels like you're going to be able to come to an answer independently of your own preferences. In fact, in many cases, you might deliberate morally. I hope this has happened to you where you deliberate on some moral matter and you come to a conclusion that you don't like at all, right? Um, it might be deeply disturbing to you, right? It might offend you even because you hold to some principle, say, that has an entailment that doesn't please you, right? It's, it's, it's against your preferences and desires. Uh, so that would be weird to talk about in the Frosty case, right? We're not deliberating about Frosties and we come to think that fro vanilla is better than chocolate and that's deeply offensive to our preferences and desires. That's weird because that's a weird thing to say because whether the frosty is good just depends on our preferences and desires. Okay, so that's the case. Enoch thinks dis disagreement and deliberating about moral matters feels a lot more like disagreeing and deliberating about the shape of the earth than it does uh, the goodness of vanilla versus chocolate frosties. So what can a sort of relativist about morality, someone who denies the objectivity of morality, say in response to this? Well, um, one thing they could say I've already gestured at, they could say, well, look, I mean, it, moral disagreements don't always or even usually feel more like um, the shape of the earth, earth case than they do about the vanilla frosty case. I mean, we can find lots of middle ground between the etiquette cases we mentioned earlier and the abortion case where it really does feel like it comes down to just differences of preferences, preference or opinion, right? And you can see this especially cross-culturally, right? So if you encounter some culture where they think you have a moral obligation to cover your head, for example, and you think that you don't have any such obligation, the relativist about morality might respond to Enoch by saying, well, look, I mean, we could talk about that. We disagree about it. And ultimately it might come down to a situation where we say, you know, maybe that's just right for you because that's sort of the culture you're coming from. And it's really not something I feel very strongly about. So I don't really feel like I have an obligation. That's not really the culture that I come from. And so, Really, I think here, the relativist about morality, the person who wants to deny the objectivity of morality, is going to be able to grab onto certain disagreements or deliberations uh, that are genuinely moral disagreements, but really they could at least make the case don't feel like the roundness or flatness of the earth. They feel more like disagreeing with someone about whether frosties, uh, which kind of frosty is better. So that is how a sort of relativist might reply to Enoch. That's not to say that that's gonna be a successful reply. Importantly, I think Enoch's greatest strength here is that he's not necessarily claiming that all moral claims are objectively true. Just that some central class, some subclass of moral claims are going to be objectively true. So maybe he could even say here, yeah, maybe they're not all objectively, objectively true or purely objectively true. Maybe sometimes it depends on your cultural background, especially if you have some more fundamental moral principle, like you should respect the person, uh, person's wishes into whose, into whose <laughs> home you're entering. Uh, that's going to engender different moral truths in different cultures, maybe. Maybe across cultures, uh, it's true that you ought to respect the person's wishes whose house you're going into. 
uh, but in some places people want you to take your shoes off and in some places people don't. And so you get this difference, this more superficial difference of what you ought to morally do in those different cultures, but it's only because of this deeper moral truth. Okay, so the point there is that Enoch only has to say that some moral truths are objectively true. That's his commitment, right? If that's right, then relativism about morality is wrong, right? It's not the case that all moral claims are relative to someone's feelings or are determined by someone's feelings or a culture's uh, approvals or disapprovals or whatever. And if Enoch can latch onto these cases, these really serious moral cases like abortion, gun rights, etc., where disagreement about them feels more like an objective disagreement where there's a fact of the matter out there that we need to find rather than just uh, trying to figure out what our own preferences are, then that's really the central part of his task, right? So the relativist has this hard task in front of them. They need to argue that for any sort of moral disagreement, it's going to be more like the frosty disagreement than the uh, shape of the earth disagreement, right? Or they need to argue that this is just a bad test in general the feel, the subjective feel of a disagreement or the subjective feel of deliberating is not a reliable way of determining whether um, the claims in that domain are objectively or subjectively true. And that might be for that reason, the stronger route for them if they want to disagree with Enoch. 